start recording. So let's go ahead and do a couple of more examples, at least one more example on synthetic division and see how that goes. Okay. Suppose we want to use synthetic division uh, to divide the pub. We have x to the power 4 minus 10x squared. minus 2x plus 4, and we're going to divide by x plus 3. <coughs> One thing about the synthetic division versus long division is synthetic division we can always use if we're dividing by a linear factor. In other words, uh, when we're dividing a polynomial by a linear factor like x to the power 1 that for that, then we can use syntax division to do that. However, if we do have a division of a polynomial by nonlinear factor, then we do have to use long division for that. Okay? So that's the, pur that's the purpose of learning both ways. Because in some things, suppose for example, I want to use, I want to divide by, say, x squared plus 3, then it is mandatory. You cannot use synthetic division for that. Okay? So synthetic division can only be used for dividing by linear factor. So let's go ahead and use the synthetic division to divide by, by, the, by that. So first we said we need to divide by x plus 3. Then my number that goes in here is negative 3. Always the opposite of what is with the linear factor that I'm trying to divide. Yes? So if I have here minus 3, that means I'm dividing by x plus 3. If I happen to have a plus 3 over here, then I'm divided by x minus 3. Yes? So now, we need to set up the coefficients. We need to set up the coefficients of all the axes that we have. And we have to go in order from the highest to the constant without skipping any. So if there is any variable such that x cube or x squared that doesn't exist in the polynomial, we write it as 0. Okay. So here we have the first exponent is uh, x coefficient is 1. Now after x to the 4 should come x cube. Uh, we don't have any x cube in here, so I'm going to just put it as 0. And then we have a negative 10. For the x squared, for the x, we have negative 2, and the constant is plus 4. Why do I think this is not going to show up correctly? But let's go ahead and do that. So to start, I'm just going to put a line over here. I'm going to give myself a little, a little bit of space. Okay. So first, the first coefficient, we're going to take it down as is. Going to take the first coefficient down as this. Then we're going to multiply that coefficient we took down by the number we have there. And then we're going to put the result under the second one. So 1 times a negative 3 is negative 3. And then we're going to add those two terms. So 0 plus a negative 3 is negative 3. Then we take negative 3 again, multiply it by negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. And then we're going to take negative 10, add 9 to it. That's going to give me a negative 1. Then we take negative 1 again, multiply it by negative 3. And that's going to give me a 3. And then negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 
and one times negative three is negative three and then four minus three is one okay so now now what do i have this term is one exponent less than what we started yeah so now if i call this say f of x then f of x equal I divided by x plus 3, so that's x plus 3 times, times what? This is, again, 1 less than that. So this is x cubed. And then we're going to go back down one at a time. So this is the x cubed. This would be the x squared minus x, yes, plus this one, and what happened to this one? What do we call this one? This is called the remainder of the big. Yes? So when I divide, for example, 10 by 3, yeah, what do I have left? So 10 divided by 3 is 3, right? But then we do have a remainder. What's the remainder for dividing 10 by 3? 1. Yeah? So I can say 10 is equal 3 times 3 plus whatever remainder we have, which is 1. Correct? So now I stated this. This function equal the number we divided by times the answer plus the remainder. And in this case, the remainder is split. So this is one way of rewriting that equation. And then we know that x plus 3 is not really a factor of that. Why? Because we have a remainder. If the remainder happened to be 0, then we say uh, x plus 3 is a factor of the given polynomial. Okay, the next step on the synthetic division states the problem. It says remainder and factor theorem. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Remainder and factor theorem. It says if a polynomial f of x, if f of x is divided by x minus k, if f of x is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is f of k. The remainder is f of k. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say, for instance, we're going to divide that f of x equal, say, 3x cubed plus 8x squared plus 5x minus 7. Yes? And we're going to divide that by x plus 2. Yeah? So k, k in this case, minus 2. Yeah? So k in this case is minus 2. Let's 
see what happened when we divide first of all. When we divide, so we're gonna put your mi minus two over here. We're gonna start three, eight, five, negative seven. And then we're gonna go ahead and divide that by uh, minus two over here. So we're gonna take a three down. Three times negative two is negative six. And that's gonna give me left over two. And then two times negative two is negative four. And then left over is one. One times negative two is negative two. And negative seven, negative two is negative five. Now, now this part is your remainder. Yes? What does that mean with respect to what I just wrote up there? Okay. Let's figure out how do I how do I find out what f of minus two is? Okay, f of minus two. To figure out what f of minus two is, you need to substitute minus two into the equation, right? And then figure out what that number is. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have three times negative two cubed plus eight times negative two squared plus five times a negative two minus seven. So if we evaluate these, that's gonna give me negative two cubed is a negative eight times three is negative 24 plus 16 minus 10 minus seven. Uh, three times negative two cubed. Right. That's right. Three times twenty-four, and that's gonna be. Oops. Sorry about that. Two squared is four. That's thirty-two. Yeah. We got sixteen there is that. That is thirty-two. So let's see what's going on. Thirty-two take away twenty-four is. Eight, yeah. Eight take away seven is one. One take away ten is negative nine. And that's exactly what we have. So now when I divide, when I use synthetic division to divide by x minus k. That means the remainder is the same as evaluating the function itself at k. Yes? So we had two ways of evaluating the function at, at say, in this case, negative 2. One way was to use synthetic division and figure out what the remainder is, and that would be the value of the function at that point, or to substitute. Substitute, sometimes you it's easy to make a mistake. Yeah? Sometimes it's a whole lot easier to do synthetic division in order to figure out the value of the function at that particular point <coughs> instead of doing a substitution uh, for that particular point. And especially, especially when this exponent gets let's say seven and eight and nine and whatsoever, yes? And therefore you have to uh, use calculator. You have to make sure you input them correctly, all of them. Otherwise we make mistakes, yes? So let's go ahead and do another example. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and Say f of x is and I'm gonna say four x cubed, four x cubed, uh, plus ten x square, plus 
minus 3x minus 8. And the question here is find f of 4. Find f of 4. So we need to figure out what f of 4 is. Well, again, we could substitute that, or we could also use synthetic division to determine what f of 4 is. So I'm just going to put 4 on this side, and I'm going to write the coefficients. 4, 10, negative 3, negative 8. Put my little line over here. Let's take the 4 down. That is 4. No, they just big, big numbers. 4 times 4 is 16. So that's 16. And 10 plus 16 is 26. 26 times 4 is 104. 104. Minus 3 plus 104 is 101. Yeah? And 101 times 4 is 404. And then that will give me 396. Yeah. So that was one way of figuring out what of f of four is. Okay. And again, I think in some cases this is a whole lot easier than uh, substituting the value and figuring out what it is. Okay. So that's evaluating the function using the remainder there. This factor in a form. Now again, we could use synthetic division to factor to factor a polynomial. Yeah, we're gonna do that later on. But let's go ahead and see how we can approach this. It says, a polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if f of k is equal to 0. In other words, we can say f of x has a factor kx minus k only if f of k equals 0. Only if f of k equals 0, then we can determine that this polynomial has a factor which is x minus k. Okay? So let's do the following. It says, it says, show that we need to show x minus 2 and x plus 3 are factors of f of x equals 2x to the 4 plus 7x cubed. Minus 4x squared plus 27x. I mean, minus 27x minus 8. So we need to show that these two factors, these two factors are, or these are factors of this particular polynomial. Well, to determine that they are factors, we do synthetic division. And if the remainder is zero, then they are. If the remainder is not zero, then they're not. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So first we're going to use uh, x minus 2. So I'm going to take 2 and then see if I can use synthetic division to figure out the remainder of substituting uh, 2. So we have 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, negative 18. Take the 2 down. 2 times 2 is 4. That's going to give me 11. Yeah? And then 11 times 2 is 22. And that's going to be 18. 18 times 2 is 36. And 27 take away 36 is that's going to be, what was it? Nine? Yeah. And then nine times two is 18. And then we have a remainder of zero. Yeah. So that means it is, so this shows X minus two is, is five. Now, to check for x plus 3, after we already determined x minus 2 is a factor, then we could do one of two things. Because this is a factor, I can continue from here. If it's not a factor, I start all, all over. Yes? But because this is a factor, I can take this part instead of that part. Notice this part has less calculation. Yeah. So I can put my minus 3 over here, put my line, and that's all, those are already set for me. Yeah. And then start this. Take the 2 down. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. That's a 5. That's a negative 15. That's a 3. That's a negative 9. That's a 0. So now we have another zero over here, which indicates what? Indicates x minus or x plus 3 is also a factor. Now, how do I factor this? Now, this is equal for sure. First factor is x minus 2, right? So x minus 2. What's the second factor? x plus 3. Now, what's the remaining part? Let's go back here. Yeah? The first division took it from exponent 4 down to exponent 3. Yes? The second division took it from exponent 3 down to exponent 2. So this is going to be your x squared, x constant. So now we can write the third factor, x squared plus x uh, plus 5x. And we have 2x squared. 2x squared, 5x plus 3. And that gives me the third factor for that one. Now, of course, if I was to factor everything, if I was to factor everything, then I will factor this particular part over here and write it in terms of linear factor, if possible. OK? Any questions? No? I guess that's everything about the dark division. So we have determining the value of a function at a particular point. We can use synthetic division. We can determine if a factor is 
if a linear factor is a factor of the function, we can also use synthetic division. If we know a particular polynomial is zero at one point, we can use that to factor the polynomial as well. Okay? And hopefully later on we will uh, we will do more into factoring polynomial those that cannot be factored uh, the normal ways. Okay. So today we're done with the polynomial and synthetic division. Complex number is the next step. Imaginary unit. A definition, I is an imaginary unit, and then I is equal to square root of negative one. If a complex, if X, and B are real numbers and a complex number is of the form A plus B I. If A and B are two real numbers, then the complex number can be written in the form of A plus B I. Where A represents real part, then the real part of that complex number is where A is, and B represent imaginary part. So B is your imaginary part of that particular number. If two complex numbers are equal, two complex numbers are equal, then the real parts are the same and imaginary part are the same. For instance, if Z1 equal A plus BI, yeah? And let's say Z2 equals C plus DI, if Z1 equals Z2, those are just uh, numbers, you know? We just I just call the first number Z1, call the second number Z2, right? If these two are the same, then A must equal to C, and B must equal to D. So those two uh, numbers, those two complex numbers are the same, then this situation is true.
now of course a complex number can be any it could be also a re just a real number if p is equal to zero yeah so if p is equal to zero then this would just be a that will be uh, a real number so real numbers all real numbers are part of complex number so complex number are the wider variety of numbers that contains all type of numbers okay even though real numbers don't have imaginary part in it but complex numbers do have imaginary part so if this is the complex number circle then the real number will be somewhere in there okay and all of these parts outside would be your imaginary part okay so let's go ahead and take a look at how we do arithmetic with complex numbers. So I equals square root of one, I square equals negative one. If I square both sides, I end up with I square equals to add complex number plus or subtract complex number you add or subtract real part and negative part each by itself. So for this, if Z1 equal A plus B I, Z2 equal C plus D I, A1, if Z1 equal A plus B I, Z2 equal C plus D I, then Z1 plus Z2 or minus, whether I'm adding or I'm subtracting, it will be adding or subtracting the real part plus uh, B plus or minus D. And let's do it that. Say let z1 equal 3 plus 2i. Let z2 equal 5 minus 3i. Then z1 plus z2 equal. Can I add these parts, right? 3 plus 5, yeah, plus, and then we have these two, 2 plus a minus 3. So that is equal, 8 minus Yeah. So if I'm looking at Z1 minus Z2, again, that would be 3 minus 5 plus 2 minus minus 3. All right. That's equal. 
3 minus 5 is a negative 2. Uh, these are positive. Any question? Now we could use we could use just simply a regular set instead of memorizing what we're gonna add. Just remember, I is imaginary number, so you could have an I term. Yes. So let's do this without having to use the uh, particular formula, and let's continue with what we've been doing before. If I'm adding. If I'm adding this term to that term, it's going to be simply 3 plus 2i plus parentheses 5 minus 3i. Yeah? I just list those the way they are. Then 3 plus 2i plus 5 minus 3i. Remove the parentheses. Yeah. Now, when you think about this, well, this is a constant, right? They, they can be added together. So 3 plus 5 is 8. And these two are I terms. And they can be added together. 2I minus 3I is negative 5. So we still have the same answer. But we're still in the range of what we're doing in algebra without having to memorize uh, any particular equations or any new techniques. Okay? But we just dealt with i as being uh, just like any other variable, like x over half. So if I were to subtract, and I'll put a subtraction here, I put a subtraction in. And now, when I take out the parentheses, this becomes a minus. This ends up to be a plus. And the final answer is 3 minus 5 is minus 2. 2i plus 3i is 5i. And we got the same. Just remember your parentheses. Yes? Just remember your parentheses all the time. Any question? No. All right. So now we're going to move on to addition and subtractions are easy. It's just basically like we've been doing algebra all the time, right? Let's do multiplication. Let's say, for instance, I'm multiplying four times uh, two plus three i. Multiplying four times three plus three i. Uh, 2 plus 3i. Same thing as expanding when we have x instead. Just multiply the numbers. So 4 times 2 is 8. And 4 times 3 is 12. That's it. So let's multiply them. Here we multiply real number times a complex number. Yeah? Let's multiply imaginary number. Let's say we're going to use 4i times 2 plus 3i. And we still have the same factor, right? I just simply did what? Added i to it. Multiply. 4i times 2 is 8i. Yeah? 
And then if I take 4i and I multiply it by 3i, we end up with 12i squared. A uh, complex number does not have any exponent to i. So I need to change that. How do I change it? Well, we already know that i squared equal how much? Negative 1. Just replace i squared by negative 1. So that's equal 8i plus 12 times negative 1, no more i. That's equal to 8i minus 12. Or a standard form is really to write the real number first and then the imagine. So minus 12 plus 8i. So when you multiply it, you just want to make sure that you don't have uh, what do you call uh, i to the power other than 1, OK? So if you have i squared, you want to change it. If you have i cubed, you want to change it, and so on, OK? Well, we just said we know what i squared is. i squared is negative 1. What is i cubed? Uh, wouldn't I cube be one, or would it be? Not one. I can write I cube as I squared times I. Yeah? Isn't that I cube? What is I squared? Negative one. That's equal to negative one times I which is negative i. You will close there. <laughs> OK? OK, what's i to the power 4? One? Yeah, one. All right, so that's going to be i squared times i squared, which is equal to 1. OK? And what's i to the power? OK, let me write this down. Let me write this down. In terms of i, i equal i. In terms of i, i squared equal negative 1. We said i cube is equal to negative i. i4 is equal to 1. Yeah? What's i to the power 5? <laughs> i to the power 4 equal how much? One, so this is i to the power 4 times i, which is i. Isn't that one? Yeah. One times i is? <laughs> now I want to make it too complicated. But I do in just a second. So what's i to the power 6 now? Come on, somebody give me an answer. Negative 1. Mm -hmm. This is uh, i to the power 5 times i. Well, i to the power 5 is i. i times i is negative. So notice what we have in here. We have i, negative 1, negative i, 1, right? I'm sure i, negative 1, i to the power 7 is going to give me negative i, i to the power 8 is going to give me 1. Yes? 
Okay? So no matter what I do, the exponent is, you're always going to end up with one of these four answers. Never going to be anything else. So even if I put i to the power, say, 200, that's going to give me a 1. Okay? i to the power 200 is going to give me 1. If I say i to the power 1003, and 1003 is going to give me negative i. All is necessary to do is figure out how do you pick it up right away. Okay? Well, there are two ways. There are two ways. We can either divide by four or divide by two. I'm going to show you both ways. Okay? First, let's take a look at this number over here. I to the power 1,003. Yep. How do I find that? Well, this is the same thing as I already know what I square is. Okay? I already know what I square is. Correct? So, 1,003, it is two times. It's two times what? 501, correct? Remainder what? One. Yes? So I can rewrite this as I square to the power 501 times I. I square to the power 501 and half. Okay? Well, this is the same as, I'm going to step at a time, negative 1 to the power, is an I square negative 1? 501 and half. Okay? Now, if I take a negative, I take a negative. Now, one times one, and I don't care if you multiply it a million times, it's going to end up with one, correct? But if I take a negative and I raise it to an odd power, the answer is negative. If I raise it to an even power, the answer is positive. Okay? 501 is odd, so we have a negative. That's one way. Okay? It may be a little bit complicated for some, but this is one way. The other way, instead of dividing by two, let's let's figure out by four. Yeah? What is the remainder after dividing 1003 by 4? What would be the remainder? Okay, 1,003 divided by 4, you're supposed to get 250 point something, right? 0. 0.75, right? Why don't you subtract 250? Subtract 250 from the answer. Equal times 4. Three. So that's going to be 250. Right? Remainder? Three. The only thing I'm interested in is in the remainder. So I to the power 1003 is the same thing as I to the power 3, whichever the remainder is. Yeah? And I to the power 3 is? So if I tell you what is I to the power 1,000,000, 
two, then what do you do? You take one million two, you divide it by four, you find what the remainder is. You're gonna find out that the remainder is two. So this is the same thing as I squared, which is negative. Now maybe we're not gonna use them right now, but we will use them in the multiplication. Because when we multiply, this is exactly what's gonna happen. We're gonna end up with uh, some numbers uh, that are multiplied and depend on what the exponent is, that's how much i is gonna be eight raised to the power. And we need to figure out what the value of that i when it's raised to a certain power. So no matter what it is, there are two ways over here. You can either divide by two and replace it by negative one, or you can just simply divide it by four and look at only the remainder of dividing by four. And that's what your next I is gonna be. Okay. So now, um, okay, so we did this multiplication. Now let's go ahead and multiply. So we multiply the real number times that. We multiply the imaginary number times that, right? So let's multiply uh, a, a complex number consists of both of them times another complex number consists of both of them. So let's multiply uh, two plus three i times uh, seven minus five i. Let's multiply uh, these two numbers and see what we end up with. <coughs> so now, two times seven, we're just gonna expand it like normal. Two times, gonna multiply this number times this. This number times that, this is times this, and that times that. So every number in the first factor, we're going to multiply it by all the numbers in the second factor. 2 times 7 is 14 minus 10i plus 3 times 7 is 21i. And then three times a negative five would be I squared. So now, now we're gonna simplify this. We simply add all like terms. This is a constant term, but I don't have any, any constant term just yet, okay? So I'm going to leave that 14 by itself for now. So as both terms are I terms. So that means I'm going to add those two together. So negative 10 plus 21 will give me plus 11, 11I. 11 yes? Now let's take a look at this term. Negative 15i squared. But we don't want no i squared, right? So we're going to change the i squared. We change it to? Uh, negative, one. negative 1. So this is a negative 15 times negative 1. But then negative 15 times negative 1 is positive 15. So now plus 15. But now we can add those two, we can add those two numbers together, right? 14 and 15 is 29 plus 11i. And that is a product of these two numbers. 
Augustine. Sometimes we multiply Say, for instance, let's multiply two imaginary numbers. Say 2i times 5i. 2i okay. times 5i. But to multiply them, we normally multiply the numbers times the number, the variable, or the i times i, right? So 2 times 5 is 10. I times I is I squared, but then I squared is negative 1, so that's a negative 10. We multiply, we multiply to imaginary number, yet we ended up with one real number. Okay? Now, let's do this. 2 times 2 plus. 3i times 2 minus 3i. Why don't you guys go ahead and multiply this? And see what you end up with. Anybody got an answer? 13? I also got 13. All right, so we got two people with 13. What you got? You also got 13? Okay, so these two numbers, or these two complex numbers, when we multiply them, you saw that we got 13. Let's see if this is correct first. Yes? So let's multiply. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative 3i is negative 6i. 3i times 2 is 6i. And then 3i times 3i is 9i. Yes? And that's a minus. So far, and the square. I don't want to forget the square. That messes up the whole problem. Right? All right, so what happened to these two terms? They cancel out, right? Then what's left? 4 minus 9i squared. If you have an i squared, just change the sign. So that's going to be plus 9, which is equal to 30. So those two numbers, or those two complex numbers, are called conjugates. Anytime you multiply two conjugates, then you end up with a real number. Okay? Anytime you multiply conjugate, you end up with real number. How do I determine those two are conjugates? Notice what do I have here. 2 plus 3i, this is 2 minus 3i, yes? If I were to multiply them, let's see what we end up. Let's take a general form. Let's say we have a plus bi times a minus bi. Those are the two conjugates of each other. Let's see what we end up with. 
Multiplying this, a times a is a squared minus a b i plus a b i minus b squared i squared. Yeah. The a times a is a squared, a times b is a b times i plus b times a is a b times i positive times positive and negative is negative b squared i squared. Okay? So now what up? Again, the middle term cancels out. The middle term cancels out. And what do I have left? a squared minus b squared times a negative one for the i squared, right? And that is equal to a squared. Now we have a negative times a negative is, yes? Isn't that what this is? A in here is two, b in here is three, so A and B, we have A squared, which is 4, B squared, which is 9. Add them, you get 30. Yes. And by the way, this is the factor of the diff of the sum of two squares. You learned before how to factor the difference of two squares. You have A squared minus B squared, A plus B. A minus B, right? So we call this the factor in order difference of two squares. This now gives me what? If we have a sum instead, it will have an imaginary number in that. In that factor. And we call those the conjugate of each other. All right, well, sometimes we have division in which, or a fraction in which we need to write it in standard form. For instance, then we have three I, uh, two plus, 3i, divide that by i. Now we are using division. If I divide that by i, what do I get? Sure, I should have some more green on my division. Okay? So now what do I get? Well, I need, first of all, I need to get rid of the I on the bottom. Yes? How do I get rid of the I? Make it a real number. How do I make it a real number? How do I multiply? How do I make an imaginary number a real number? Hmm? We can and square it. We can simply multiply it by another i. Yeah? Anytime you have imaginary number, just one imaginary part, you want to make it real. One way is to multiply it by another imaginary. Yes? So if I were to multiply on the bottom by i, what do I need to do on the top to keep the fraction the same? We're going to multiply top by i. That's one. So this is equal. So now let's go ahead and multiply. On the bottom we have i squared, which is simply negative one, yeah? And what do I have on top now? We have two plus three i squared. I mean two i. Yeah? So that is equal. Let's change the i square, make it negative one. Two i 
minus 3 over negative 1. Okay? So what do I have? Well, negative 1 doesn't make sense to just put negative 1 in. We're just going to take that away and change the sign on top. So what do I have? 3 minus So if I do have a one imaginary number on the bottom, just one part, the imaginary number, <coughs> the easiest way is to do is to write that in a standard form is to change or to multiply by i on top and i on the bottom. Okay? What happened? If I have diff, say for instance, we have 4 plus i divided by 2 minus 3i. Now instead of just imaginary part, we have a complete complex number with both its parts, imaginary and real. How do I get rid of or write that in this, well, basically writing it in standard form is getting rid of the imaginary part on the bottom. Okay? If this was real, then we just, it is a standard form. Right? So this is a complex number, but it's not in standard form. How do I get rid of that? You just did this. Multiply by what? The conjugates, right? Because <laughs> anytime you multiply two conjugates, then you end up with a real number, right? So if I want to get rid of this one, I want to multiply by its conjugate. What is its conjugate? Two plus three i. Clear? Now, I did multiply by 2 plus 3i on the bottom, and I need to do the same on the top. Yes? So I'm going to put my parentheses here to indicate multiplying everything. 2 plus 3i. Okay? Now, I know what the answer on the bottom is. What's the answer on the bottom? This square plus this square. What's for a two square? Three square? No, that's it. That's the bottom part. How do I determine the top part? You just go ahead and multiply it and simplify. So four times two is eight. Four times three i is twelve i. I times two is two i. And then i times 3i is 3i squared. So far, so good. So we have 13 on the bottom. Now notice what is going to happen with this part over here. What is it going to be? It's going to be a real number, right? How much is it? What is that real number? Negative 3, yes? So this is a negative 3. 8 take away 3 is 5. Yeah? And 12i plus 2i is... If you want to split those, you can. Sometimes they ask you to split this into a plus bi. Yes? What is A in this case? 5 over 13 plus, what is B in this case? 14 over 13. Yep. That's how you're supposed to write it in standard form. You're supposed to split those two parts 
and then write. Okay. Okay, so today we're going to end our lecture at this stage. Already cover a section and a half. So I'm going to start with finding the zeros of polynomial, given any polynomial, looking at the possible zeros, and finding the zeros of those polynomials and how to find them, okay? Using perhaps synthetic division and factoring polynomial from there, okay? So that will be it for today. Uh, see you back here, hopefully, Thursday. Okay. Now, again, if the test is coming, not coming this week, probably next week, um, it may, we may delay it a little bit. Okay. So don't worry about it for until I let you know. Thank you.